thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. My name is Melissa Laufer, and it's my pleasure, along with my colleagues, um, to present to you our talk, How to Organize EdTech at the University. The majority of the talk this afternoon, we will focus on um, the outcome of our research project, namely an online research guide for practitioners implementing EdTech at the University. Um, this online research guide we call um, the Practitioner's Field Guide for Implementing EdTech, and we'll get into more details on that in a minute, and this draws on um, the outcome of a three-year research project, the Aura Project, which I will describe in more detail. I just want to check if people can hear me, because there's lots of echoing in this uh, the venue where I am. Is it all right? You're yes. fine. Okay. All right. <clears throat> So briefly, what we will talk about today, um, I would like to first start by introducing my colleagues next, very briefly talking about the research, uh, the research project, the ORA project in which our online resource guide is based. Um, I will then hand the reins on to my colleague uh, Tiana, who will briefly um, and condensely talk about the key findings of our research project. And lastly, um, Freya Marisan Lin will guide you through our online resource guide for overcoming um, organizational challenges related to implementing ed tech at the university. This will be course followed by a um, time set aside for questions. First of all, a few words to the team um, and our research project. So the ORA project stands for Organizational Adaptivity in the German Higher Education Context. Um, this was a three-year year research project and a collaboration from the, uh, between the Alexander von Humboldt Institute for Internet and Society and the Fan Universität in Hagen, Catalpa Center for Advanced Technology and, and Assisted Learning and Predictive Analytics. Um, as I previously said, my name is Melissa Laufer. I'm the project lead of Aura. Um, my Hagen counterpart is Len Ole Schaefer, postdoctoral researcher in the project. We have two researchers in the project, Freya and Bronwyn, and as well as two um, research assistants, Mauricia and Tiana. So a few words about our research project. Um, so in Aura, we were interested in investigating the how. So how can EdTech be best implemented at the university? Um, specifically, we zoomed in what are the key organizational challenge related to its implement and hinder its implementation. This allowed us to take a behind the scenes approach in our research. So we were interested, for example, what role institutional leaders play um, in implementing um, educational technology. We were interested in investigating strategy building in relation to ed tech, and as well as looking at the whole organizational culture of higher education institutions. So what um, factors prompt um, a university to have an innovative and open culture to technology. Lastly, in our research project, we prioritized knowledge sharing. Um, this meant we um, employed an interactive research model, which translated into us conducting um, research with practitioners involved. So we were eager to know what are the um, practical challenges um, teachers and administrators face when implementing ed tech and this led us to developing a number of knowledge transfer workshops as well as collaborating collectively on our online research guide we will go into detail in in one moment so this is the last slide about the Aura project. Briefly, I wanted just to give you a snapshot um, of the data um, collected in the project and what our research guide is based upon. So we looked at um, EdTech implementation in a number of different types of universities, um, ranging from private universities to music and arts to open universities and everything in between. Um, again, we are zooming in on experiences of staff members implementing educational technology. This included leadership, technical staff, as well as teaching staff, in addition to um, select experiences with individuals working in university associations. 
So our um, empirics include information from 25 countries. There were three main empirical studies that we conducted, as well as a fair number of interviews, focus groups, surveys, and as I already mentioned, knowledge transfer workshops. All right, I'll pass the reins on to Tiana. We'll talk um, briefly about the key findings of our project. Hey, thank you. Um, so our research aimed to identify organizational challenges in the implementation process of educational technology. And uh, through our survey, we discovered that challenges such as developing a digital strategy, uh, monetary resources, resistance against um, educational technology, motivating teaching staff, um, overcoming teaching habits, improving the technical infrastructure and choosing a fitting leadership style um, are directly linked to the implementation of uh, digital teaching. And uh, two of the most crucial challenges are um, developing an individual uh, strategy and maintaining high levels of motivation among university staff to use their digital skills in their courses. And um, as you can see, our statistics reveal that uh, over three quarters of our survey participants agree that having a digital strategy is very essential. And however, the question that arises is um, how to develop a digital strategy that is um, suitable for a particular university structure. And According to the responses we received um, from our survey, it is important to identify both like infrastructural and also personal resources um, to develop an individual strategy that aligns with the university structure. And it was also really like interesting to see that there are different um, definitions of having a digital strategy um, for some participants. For example, it means to have like an official document with guidelines um, provided from the central university leadership, uh, while others um, define a strategy as something which is shown in actions, like, for example, offering didactical trainings. Um, yeah, so to sum it up, um, for developing an individual strategy, it is very essential to um, identify the meaning of having a strategy and uh, also uh, define the resources the university offers. And yeah, next one. Um, having a strategy alone isn't really enough um, to implement digital teaching in uh, university classes. So it is equally important to motivate the university staff to use their uh, own digital skills in their courses. And to address this issue, we asked our survey participants what uh, the institution could offer more to keep their motivation levels high. And here we are, uh, here we have um, some quotes out of our survey and um, examples here are monetary incentives, um, funding or didactical trainings. So these are just two out of many barriers that uh, come up during the implementation process of digital teaching in, in universities. And yeah, if you're interested in uh, reading more about these challenges, you can visit our field guide, which is presented right now. Thank you, Tiana. Yeah, from these challenges that came up in the survey results, we'll move on to possible solutions and the field guide. One goal of the Aura project was to translate research results into practical recommendations. And as uh, Melissa said, share knowledge with practitioners in the field. And this is how the practitioners field guide for implementing EdTech came about that we are presenting today. Um, the Practitioner's Field Guide for Implementing EdTech is a digital resource that presents insights from our empirical studies, links them to other research findings, and pairs them with practical guides and examples. The Field Guide can be used by all people working at the university and thinking about how, how to organize digital change. 
in the spirit of the whole Aura project, the Field Guide is a collaborative effort that would not have been possible without the contribution of our research participants. We would like to thank all research participants for their time and effort and the insight they gave us into their work. And we especially want to thank the contributing experts who gave us valuable and encouraging feedback on a draft of the Field Guide before it was released. So what is the Field Guide? As I said, it's an online resource, a web page that is freely accessible. It covers six key themes, leadership and strategy, infrastructure and networks, resistance and motivation. These correspond to the recurring topics that we saw in our research. Um, for each of these sections, there is one takeaway tool. So these are discussion guides or examples or concrete steps to take. And the takeaway tools, as well as the sections and the full guide can be downloaded separately from the web page. Um, so before we visit the page together, and Maricia gives you a little tour, I will give you an overview of the, of the topics of the guide, of the six key themes. So in the first section on leadership, we discuss how when leading with educational technology, formal institutional leaders can act as encouragers and how they can partner with informal leaders at the institution. The second section on strategy explores how in order to create a common vision, institutions can include different voices from across the university and the guide presents steps to find this common vision and to disentangle different motivations for pursuing ed tech. In the third section, infrastructure, we stress the importance of building a strong foundation to implement ed tech at the university. Software and hardware, the technical equipment are basic requirements, but they also need to be constantly taken care of. And infrastructure is also not only IT, but we also stress how didactic support is necessary. The fourth section, maintain, maintaining connections, talks about professional networks within and beyond the own institution. Exchanging with peers can help to build skills and confidence. In the fifth section, we investigate the counterpart of engagement. It was already mentioned that we found very strong emotional resistant responses towards digital change. And instead of saying we just need to overcome this resistance, we think it's important to understand and unpack it and reflect on what can be learned from it. In the last, in the sixth section, fostering motivation, we address a key factor for the success of ed tech, individual motivation. What are motivational factors that fuel teachers' interest in using ed tech and how are they connected to institutional reward schemes? And yeah, with this overview, we can start and have a look at it. So I'll hand over to Maricia to give you a tour. Yes, thank you so much, Freya, for this first introduction to the field guide. We will now have a direct look at it and quickly scroll through the website to which the link has been provided in the chat. And I will be sharing my screen so that we can look at it directly. There we go. You should be able to see my screen now, is that correct? Can someone give me like a quick hint? Yes. Okay, perfect, thank you. Mm. Okay, so this is the landing page to the field guide. Um, up at the right top, you can find a small drop down menu which provides further links and a small abstract, but we'll have a look at the main parts of the website. Aside from the field guide itself, there is more information provided under the additional tabs you can find in the middle here. While field guide leads you to the content of the guide, about provides additional info to the guide and you can find all downloads under this tab. The other tabs are quite self-explanatory. So under project background, you can find information about the project and the inst institutions involved. Contributing authors lists not only the authors, but also all contributing experts and references provides a full bibliography. We will stay under this tab. And if you go to the left-hand side of the page, you can find a menu, which leads you to all the different sections within the field guide, which have been briefly introduced by Freya already. 
At the top of the field guide, you can not only find an abstract and how to cite the field guide here and there, um, but if you click on this button, you'll be led to a full downloadable PDF version of the guide in case you want to add it to your library or take notes while reading. So let's start the journey. Clicking on this button or scrolling down, you'll be led to the introduction. But since we don't have as much time today, we'll go further and look at the first section, which is called Leading with Educational Technology. As you can see, there is another download link provided at the top here. If you click here, you can download this full section and you can find an option like this at the beginning of every of the six sections. Also, there is additional information at the margins, be it definitions of terms used in the text or further exploration of a topic. It's always marked with a little star like that. In the text itself, um, some words are highlighted, which means that they're referring to a reference. You'll recognize the little speech bubble here. Or if there is no speech bubble next to the highlighted section, clicking on it will lead you to a paragraph within the field guide itself, which explores that topic further like this. So let's scroll a bit further. This is the first section. Now, if you read through the sections, you'll see quotes and sometimes even deeper dives into the data in the form of case study snapshots. We drew directly from our eight case studies here and hope to help you to a more nuanced understanding of the topic. At the end of each section, you'll come across an info box, which is to be expanded like that. Here, a takeaway, a tool, so to say, is provided. It should help reflecting and exploring the topic further. Each tool can be downloaded at the top of the info box, which is right there. And it also provides a PDF version. And that's the main information you'll need to use the field guide. As I said, the link has been provided in the chat, and we're, of course, always open for feedback. Now, Freya and Len will walk you through three use case scenarios for the field guide, and I will stop my screen share. Thank you, Marisia. Um, yeah, to end this presentation of the guide, we thought we would give you three examples on how to use it. Um, and for this, Len will take the role of three different users. So in our first use example, we meet a faculty leader. Yes, um, in this example, yeah, I'm a dean and um, we are really struggling with implementing educational technologies at our university. And I'm a dean at a mid-sized university and I ask myself, how can I encourage instructors in my faculty to use educational technology without interfering with their freedom to create their own courses? Okay, thank you for the question. And I think you would want to look into the section that we just looked at, the section on leadership, um, because that will give you um, an insight on how you can lead, but also include your faculty members in this leadership. Um, the section presents um, the concept of co-ownership, which means that decision making is shared between formal leaders like you as a dean, but also informal leaders. People working at your faculty who are very pas pas passionate to use EdTech. And in the discussion guide that we just saw in this info box, um, there's questions mm -hmm. that can help you identify these form informal leaders in your faculty and then possibly partner with them. So I think you would want to look at this section and that discussion guide. Um, so I hope that this could answer your question or at least give a start <laughs> to an answer. Yes, a very, um, a very good start and impression for um, considering the informal leaders in the university. I think this is marginalized um, in the actual and current um, dialogue in the university. All right. Then in the second use scenario, we meet in Len as another person, um, as a person leading the IT services. Yeah, we are really struggling with the IT service at our new university. And I lead the IT service at the University of Applied Sciences. And I ask myself, how can I improve the technical support at my institution? Okay, not surprisingly, you will look into the section on infrastructure and um, maybe find also there like 
inspiration from other cases. So in this section, we have a few case study snapshots that illustrate how in the in the case studies that, that we um, yeah, visited, um, what innovative ideas they have for the tech support. For example, in one institution, students were members of tech teams. And then in another institution, they had a really strong sense of how to combine technical and didactic support um, with um, having learning so-called learning technologists at their institutions who combine technical and didactic from the very start. So I think this section and also the, again, the discussion guide that belongs to it um, can give guidance on yeah, how to do this. And let's end with the third scenario. In the third scenario, the third user is um, ex an exhausted instructor. Yeah. I'm a professor at a universe, research university and feel tired of teaching online and using digital tools after the pandemic. Can I go back to normal now? That's a tough question. I think um, what you can find in the guide to like help you reflect on this is um, other resistant responses. So in the section on resistance, um, we yeah think there's other instructors and their reasons why they are resistant towards using edtech. Some instructors found that digital classes lead to less engagement. And we think that this is a, an opportunity to reflect on what is what is important for your teaching. So, um, and how edtech can be helpful or sometimes not like it, but resistance is maybe a prompt to, yeah, reflect on what you want your classes to be like. Um, so we think, uh, yeah, to, as we as we said and to unpack this resistance and like think about it can be helpful for you and then if you are looking for motivation you can um, check out the section on motivation that uh, find like uh, points to potential sources of motivation in your own use or in colleagues use of edtech and also ask the questions what circumstances you would need to experiment more with edtech maybe yeah, great. That's, I think um, the three exemplary uses. And with that, <laughs> um, we'll open the floor to discussions, or I'll hand over to Len to, to be the moderator of the discussion. Yes, yeah. thank you very much. We are very curious about your comments, your questions, and your ideas relating our research project and the field guide that we've created so far. Um, yeah, please um, raise your hand if you have any questions and um, write it down into the chat. I saw some questions um, um, that were passed and um, I think if there are some other questions, we could start with them. Otherwise, I will go into the questions that um, proposed so far. Okay, um, the qu first question for Nikita was, how is resistance a key ingredient in our work? Is there somebody from our team that will directly respond to that? Yeah, maybe I can do that. <laughs> um, so, we, as we know, resistance is something like really negative and as we know as negative connoted term but um, we see resistance not as something not just as something that has to be overcome but as something that can like offer new perspectives for example it can um, identify lags in the teaching process for example if somebody says i don't want um, use digital technology in my class uh, because i don't know how to use it easily said, um, the university leader maybe can say, uh, okay, so we have to offer digital or didactical trainings to help those persons. Yeah. Did this answer the question, Nikita? Was it helpful for you or when you are in the room? Or do you have further question to this issue? 
Okay, I think Nik Nikita. Um, then let's move on to the second question. So Jörg asks if um, resistance and hardiness are synonyms. So we are actually writing a paper about resistance. I think that we um, can um, directly answer to this question. I think Melissa, do you, you you're writing actually at the paper? You do you have a spontaneous reaction to that? <clears throat> Thank you, Len. Um, resistance and hardiness. Hmm. I don't, I wonder if I can introduce another term to the mix: uh, resilience. Um, so is it about um, people's ability to change and also the desire to change? There's definitely an interconnectedness um, to these terms that we're seeing. Um, we have identified a number of different resistant responses in our data um, of people associating uh, technology with a um, with a lot of fear, fear of the unknown, fear of looking incompetent. Um, and I think this is somehow linked to their um, perhaps ability to accept change or their resiliency in some areas. All right. Um, yeah, and we, we're performing another research project that will dive deeper into this issue. We will continue our research project with the research project org that um, directly relates to resilience, creativity, and attack. And um, there we also will translate these ideas into um, our research results. Then Jörg draws another question. So is the leader and manager role always mixed or is this only random at here? So this was a question when we um, were referring to the um, to the um, to the examples, I think, and um, yeah, we 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 just developed the examples from our interview studies, and um, there the leader and the manager wasn't um, exceptionally um, divided. Sometimes there were some people that. Um, act as a manager and um, as a leader, but we didn't uh, perform, for example, discourse analysis to differentiate leaders and managers in that certain point, I think. Or does anyone would like to add something to this issue from our research team? Um, I'm not sure if the question is the question about if um... I don't know, the guide is always, is it written specifically for leaders in mind? I'm not sure if that was the question. Maybe um, in addition, I can add, um, yeah, and our research showed that leaders do play an important role in shaping approaches to educational technology, but um, there also is equally important to think about um, staff engagement with technology. You can have a very um, charismatic leader that's very supportive of technology, but without buy-in from the staff. Um, there, that is also essential to equation. I see there, York is following up. Um, there are different tasks and indications for both roles, or one person taking both roles. Oh, I see. Um, well, in the guide, we have a di in some sections a division. We talk specifically of what roles and um, formal leaders, institutional leaders can do, and also what staff members can do. But we also have um, something we call informal leadership or emergent leadership. So leaders um, that are taking individuals that are taking on leadership roles in technology that aren't formally assigned these tasks, they're doing it out of personal interest. So we have um, all three perspectives. So I see another question. So which concepts of motivation did you use? There are many theories about that. So are there any direct comments on that? Then I will um, distinguish some um, concept that we are actually um, we are referring um, to a concept about intrinsic motivation um, and extrinsic motivation. These are the first th theories we are performing so far. 
and um, we will see if this material that we have will dive deeper into these um, questions relating to the theories. So, does anyone have another question? Okay, then. Maybe it would be good at this juncture to mention that we will be available at a network table uh, following this session if you were to have further discussion points. Um, okay, because I believe our, our section, do we have further time in this session? I believe it uh, included. No, unfortunately, this room is going to close soon. Yeah. Okay. So if there's any other topics, feel free to join at the network table. Mm -hmm. Thanks to all of you for presenting on this topic. And yes, I will stop the recording now and send you all back to the lobby. So die Veranstaltung ist jetzt hier vorbei. Werden alle zurück in die Lobby gebracht. Vielen Dank an die SpeakerInnen hier. Vielen Dank an die ZuschauerInnen und viel Spaß heute weiter.